Two huge doubts in the banks that wouldn't let me sleep. I couldn't find a way out of it. I spent my time in depression and crying. I was really drowning in debt. I was a person who owed almost $200,000. I had a ton of debts for like 20 years. I was feeling down in the dumps. I started to let go, to leave behind the fears, to leave behind the doubts. I managed to free myself from everything from that heavy and painful burden. I felt calm and confident speaking to the Department of Criteria and presenting them with my payment proposal. I've already paid off all the debts and I almost have this house completely bought. I have enough money now because previously I didn't have enough. I had six investments. Imagine getting rid of a $200,000 debt and on top of that, having something to invest now. It's awesome, thanks a lot. It's a total blessing, and I mean like a really big one, like huge. I'm happy because I'm free. Hello, good evening. Our class has already started. Prusa press the play button to begin the session. Hey everyone, it is a genuine pleasure, an immense pleasure to have each and every one of you here in this 12th class of the Biblical Finance Intensive Program. It's great that you're here today. Are we gonna start, yeah? Yes, let's get started now. I pressed play. That's the reason I'm requesting you to press play and give your attention, because the class today is truly excellent, truly significant. Well, as many of you all already know, yes, this intensive is a series of warm-up classes for the biggest online finance event for Christians, which is the Christian week I control my finances. Dear, what will they think? On Thursday, yes, this coming Thursday, in this particular class, in this series of classes, I apologize, in our initial stage of the intensive program, look, I'm already assisting in triggering a genuine metanoia in your life. What exactly is a metanoia? It is a change in mindset regarding the subject of finances in the context of the Bible. And today, as in the previous few days, which were highly intense, I will prepare you for the upcoming second stage of the intensive program known as the Christian Week. During this week, I will encourage you to be proactive and apply all the knowledge and skills you have acquired. If you believe you've already learned a lot in this first stage, yeah, I know, just wait and see how much more learning there will be in the second stage. You'll be amazed at the amount of knowledge you'll gain during the next phase. Please remember, the Christian Hands-On Week will also be entirely free of charge and you will be able to start on the upcoming Thursday. Is that okay? We will have a closed Facebook community support materials, you know? Furthermore, the class today is going to be exceptionally special, right? So good evening, everyone. Let's have a conversation about a topic that is perhaps one of the biggest motivations to start participating in the Christian Rich Ministry and help transform the financial life of thousands of people who are seeking guidance and support in managing their money and achieving financial stability. But prior to that, I have a question for you today. Who among the individuals present here has already watched the documentary? Please write it to me in the chat. Is it for me? Yes, I want to check this out. Is it available already? Have you seen it? Yes. Can you confirm yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. The documentary is genuinely rich. If you have not seen it, make sure to check it out. You will understand what I am telling you. It is truly worth your time and you won't be disappointed. And you will also witness the power of the Bible in the realm of finances, you know. It is so delightful. It is truly impactful for your education. And today I'm discussing finances within the family, specifically focusing on the financial aspects of a couple's life. We often hear that financial problems in marriage have the potential to completely destroy a marriage and in and of themselves utterly destroy families as well. Observing and this destruction of a family caused by immaturity with finances, I envision that perhaps it is one of the numerous reasons that drives an individual to possess that mistaken belief that money is the primary source of all evil in the world, which can lead to detrimental consequences for both the person and their loved ones. Yeah, yeah, but that is not what is in the Bible. It is not the money itself. I am going to discuss this further in our comprehensive biblical finance class. However, I consistently express the belief that money in and of itself is not the root cause of all evil in the world. Money is merely a tool to fulfill God's purposes. Is it not true that money is just a means to an end? Yes, so please listen carefully. According to the Bible, it is stated that the love of money is the root cause of all evil in the world. Yes, and that is a biblical principle. Yes, you are present here to acquire knowledge about finances in the light of the Bible. 
And this is also a biblical principle, just like it is also a biblical principle that we should strive to be good administrators, good stewards, and good managers of everything that God entrusts into our hands, including our finances. That is precisely why I consistently emphasize that the root cause of all evil is the absence of knowledge regarding how to apply biblical principles in your life. The lack of understanding of the word ruins people's lives, including their financial life. And this lack of understanding is what causes such devastation. Look, having an insatiable desire for quick wealth is in direct opposition to the principles outlined in the Bible. However, mishandling money, not being concerned about money, goes against numerous principles that are outlined in the Bible. And do both of them generate or what do they generate? Tell me, destruction, yes, it generates not having financial peace. Who wants to have financial peace? Write it to me in the chat. I desire. Affirmative? Where can I locate the highly dedicated, highly dedicated? Are you guys here? Yes? Yes? Do you want to have financial peace? That's why I dedicate my life to teaching people how to apply biblical principles to their finances. And when they begin implementing them, the change takes place. We have discussed numerous biblical principles in the preceding classes. But tomorrow, observe, in the evening class, we will have a highly unique class that will serve as a checkup, a checklist, a test to determine if you are obedient to God in your finances and identify areas where you need to implement changes in your financial practices. I can guarantee you, absolutely, I am completely confident that it is the most exceptional class in this initial phase of the intensive biblical finance session taking place tomorrow evening. It is going to be a class you do not want to miss. Many individuals ask me, Doctor, what are precisely the biblical principles pertaining to finances? Look, so tomorrow in only one class, you will see that I will provide you with 12 principles in practice. There are others, yes, but in one class, I will only provide you with 12 principles in practice. Sorry, in one class, yes, you'll already have 12 principles, okay? And when it comes to finances in the family, look, and also in marriage, it usually happens like this. I'll give you an example. One individual conceals their purchase from the other person to avoid being subjected to criticism. The other person complains that their partner or family member spends too much. The other individual, of course, conceals the amount of money he earns and vice versa. I am aware that those things occur. Until a certain day, the relationship within the family indeed becomes worn out because of lack of money, also because of fights and everything else. And that is precisely what nearly happened to my student, Fernanda Ramos, who woke up just in time for this significant moment. Check out Fernanda's case. As soon as I entered the program, I was on the verge of a breakdown. I wasn't sleeping anymore. My nervous system was shot. I was chronically hypertensive and I was having crisis after crisis. My marriage was already at an end. In my marriage, we didn't talk anymore. We only argued about debts. We have three young children, so when things started to go missing, they would fight about it. Today, we already have an extra income. Our lives are totally under control, thanks to Rich Christian. I'm very grateful, Dr. Taita, for their wonderful method. And today, we have money left over, and I'm able to invest it. Unbelievable, right? Fernanda's case. Everything changed in his life after getting his finances under control. And now let me quickly share with you a real brief story about a couple of individuals that I recently encountered. It is about Jean and Alice, who made the decision to separate after 25 years of being married. How terrible. During the process of gathering the necessary documents for the divorce, Jean initiated the task of reviewing the bills that were associated with her previous credit cards. And within one of Jean's invoices, from precisely 36 months ago, I had discovered the payment for a hotel where he and Alice had experienced beautiful moments of love and cherished memories together. I recalled that on that specific date, I had accompanied Alice to that particular hotel in order to renew our sacred wedding vows. It was a truly pleasant family moment, an experience that the couple will never forget. Yes. 
Furthermore, in a separate invoice, he stumbled upon the payment for a ring he had given to Alice on the occasion of their wedding anniversary. He recollected another ticket, my apologies, he nostalgically remembered another ticket, and proudly reflected on the moment when he had purchased a small memento to commemorate the joyous occasion of your daughter's birth. How beautiful! After spending a few hours reviewing the bills on their credit cards, John came to the realization of just how much he and his wife had invested in their marriage. It was a significant amount. They had indeed invested a substantial amount at the ceremony of their wedding. He came to a stop and pondered for a few more minutes, deep in thought. Then he closed the folder and without any delay, immediately made a phone call to his wife. After exchanging a few shy words with Alice, he let slip what he really wanted. And he said to her like, Alice, would you be willing to collaborate with me to reconstruct our marriage? In the end, yes, what God has united, no amount of money can ever separate. At the close of the day, their bond is indissoluble. How nice. Yeah, listen, a truly significant and highly prevalent story. Despite a family crisis, like the one experienced by Jean and Alice, may appear remote to some of us, the meaning behind the charges on our credit card bills, whether it involves paying for a hotel, purchasing special gifts, or covering the expenses related to the birth of a daughter, is something that resonates with all of us regardless of our individual circumstances. Look, one very important thing about your financial life is that these payments on your credit card reflect the story of our lives. Initiate a conversation about our values, our savings, our expenses, and the individuals to whom we have given ourselves. Can you provide a simple response of either yes or no? Look, let's proceed. Actually, affirmative. Were you aware that the statement for our credit and debit cards additionally discloses further information regarding our priorities than any other aspect? Yeah, yeah, that's why Jesus talks so much about money in the Bible. Among the 38 parables in the Bible, a total of 16 of them specifically address the topic of how to handle money, wealth, and positions in a wise and responsible manner. In fact, Jesus Christ spoke more about money than about certain other subjects you are aware. Just to provide you with an idea, in this case, the Bible contains approximately 500 verses regarding prayer, fewer than 500 concerning faith, and a total of 2,350 discussing money, wealth, and possessions. Take a look at the significance of this topic for Christians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where can we find the highly dedicated individuals? Are the super committed people here? Yes, let's go ahead. And look, on Thursday, we're going to start our Christian week. I acquired my finances under control. You are not permitted to skip classes, all right? And if that is indeed the case, if the Lord spoke so extensively about it, it is because that particular topic certainly has a tremendous impact on our lives. Additionally, I would like to convey to you the significance of how debts, the lack of money, financial mismanagement, and financial problems can also profoundly impact your marriage and relationships with the people you love and care about deeply. And it is a primary factor that leads to conflicts and disputes that often occur between different families. Look, the truth is that money, financial difficulties, have already been identified as the second most significant factor contributing to the destruction of families and divorce globally according to numerous studies conducted worldwide. As several articles that have already appeared in newspapers and magazines around the world show, yes, and behold in actuality, indeed, difficulties with finances have a tendency to be the primary cause for marital breakups, you know? Are you aware of the reason? Yes or no? Where are the super dedicated ones? Are you guys here with me? It's a crucial topic that I know. I am aware that it is a highly significant issue for many people, even those who do not have financial peace. A lot of couples don't get divorced because they lack the cash to cover the expenses of the divorce process. Do you understand how the lack of money can destroy a family? Yes or no? Hit me up in the chat, all right? Yes, I am aware. You can even express it as, no, that is not going to occur in my family. But you most likely have knowledge of a family where that kind of situation could potentially happen, right? So if you don't have this awareness today, 
understand once and for all that debts or a lack of wisdom in handling finances can indeed destroy a family. I receive many individuals who are familiar with us and they express, oh, I desire they had been aware of our work prior to this. Because at present they have obtained a divorce and various other unfavorable incidents have taken place due to economic problems that have arisen. At present, they have fought with whomever they reside with, including their kids and all. Take a look and the problem that I consistently highlight and communicate to them, which frequently occurs in marriages, is the lack of awareness. Frequently, the couple, on numerous occasions, is not even aware of the extent to which their financial life has gradually eroded and negatively impacted their relationship with each other. And when they realize, it can be too late. Unfortunately, the statistics are absolutely terrifying and evoke a sense of fear and alarm. We have thousands of families destroyed due to a lack of wisdom in handling finances, yes or no. I am going to give you a statistic, right? And how can we get out of this terrible statistic? Yeah, look, yes, because I know you want to have your finances under control, make some extra money, yes, and start investing to make God's dreams come true in your life. Are you interested in achieving these goals? Yes, please write it to me in the chat at this very moment. I have a strong desire for it. I really do. And as your mentor for today, I want you to liberate yourself from this dreadful statistic. Isn't that right? Behold, the word of God is the ultimate and most supreme life manual that we have in our possession. Yeah, the Bible. Do you believe in the Bible? Yes or no? Yeah, if you're a Christian, you believe in the Bible. And behold, many individuals inquire of me for a recommendation of a book pertaining to finances. Yes? Why? I possess a wealth of knowledge regarding this matter. Additionally, my response is consistently unchanged. Commence by perusing the Bible. Within its pages, you will find all the information you need to acquire in order to adeptly handle your finances. Wouldn't you agree? And in order to escape from this statistic and liberate yourself completely from the enslavement of money in your life, you simply need to perform a single action. Yes, one exceedingly significant action, which is obedience. We are required to follow what this manual, commonly known as the Bible, teaches us about finances, you know. And that is precisely what my student Daniele did. Let us hear your testimony at this moment, okay? Hello, my name is Daniele. I came across the rich Christian through a photo on Facebook of a very messy room, very disorganized, and I identified a lot with that photo because that's how my life was going, with a lot of debt, and I didn't even know where to start. So I started watching the lives of Dr. Taylor Campos and showed them to my husband. We hadn't talked about finances for many years because we never understood each other in this regard. I thought one way, he thought another, and we could never understand each other. Things never flowed financially in our lives. So we saw this course as opportunity to transform our lives. So we saw that it was God's proposal for our lives. So we joined the course and we're very happy because we've achieved a lot. Many doors have opened. Unbelievable, isn't it? In the case of Daniela, she did not have a good relationship with her spouse when it came to their finances. And the outcome is evident numerous arguments, and a significant amount of debt. Daniel initiated the application of biblical principles, diligently paid off his debts, and as a result, he is now actively engaged in investment activities. Mm. He has already begun his investment journey. That is the strength derived from adhering to biblical principles. Who among you desires to implement them in your financial endeavors? Do you want to apply biblical principles and finances in your financial life? Write it to me in the chat. I desire, I desire, affirmative, affirmative. Where are they located? Affirmative, how pleasant that you are present with me on this day. That's delicious. And the truth is, yes, every time you disobey God and fail to follow a biblical principle in your life, it can create other imbalances in your life. You get it? Yes. For instance, I am going to teach you more at this moment. The Bible discusses the significance of forgiveness, correct? It is similar to that. Is it the same in the world? Yes or affirmative? Make an attempt seven times, Jesus stated. Is it like that in the word yes or yes? So not fulfilling, for example, 
this biblical principle can generate negative emotional impacts. Even a significant number of experts assert that the absence of forgiveness is one of the primary factors contributing to the development of diseases like cancer. You gotta let go of forgiveness, do the forgiveness release. Yes, now I take advantage and open a parenthesis to tell you, if you have to forgive someone today, please do it immediately right after this class, all right? Because as a Christian, that is something extremely significant and cannot be delayed any further. And for what reason? For what reason am I disclosing this to you? For what reason? Because the word of God, the Bible states that one abyss creates another abyss. And I am present here to assist you in escaping from this abyss. Yes, one problem leads to another issue. There are numerous individuals who improve their health when they engage in the process of forgiveness release, when they have their finances under control and in order. And a problem, even the absence of forgiveness, gives rise to another problem, not adhering to a biblical principle, even in relation to finances, can indeed generate emotional imbalance that ultimately impacts relationships and all of this can even potentially result in the disintegration of a family unit. And regrettably, this is the exact reason why numerous families end up getting torn apart because of the financial issues that they are facing. What generally happens is the following. Look here. Yes. Where can we find the super committed ones? That's awesome. So listen, on Thursday, we're going to start our Christian week. I'm taking control of my finances. We are currently enrolled in the Bible Finance Intensive Program. These classes are truly intense and demand a high level of commitment. Our intensive has a designated start date and an end date. So later on, you're going to miss me. It's important that you do not miss any of your classes, okay? You have got to prioritize your financial life today, the changes that God wants for your life. Have you requested an answer to your prayers? Yes, yes. Therefore, examine this and give priority. You make a financial decision. The situation is as follows. For example, you decide to buy a house financed over a period of 30 years, your own house, for instance. Take a look, five years down the line, one individual in the couple has faced a loss of income or lost their job or employment opportunity. And to avoid the risk of losing the house, what actions do you take to mitigate the potential loss and ensure its preservation? You request a personal loan to cover that debt, obtain another mortgage, believing that in the near future, you will have income once more or be capable of acquiring another mortgage. However, this is a snow boy. Similar to the situation with my beloved Maria Victoria, I'm aware that you will encounter her in one of the sessions of the Biblical Finance Intensive course. Maria Victoria, you reside in the country of Colombia. Yes. And when you have encounters, you're already concealing your purchases because when you see your partner, you begin arguing due to the belief that one person should earn a higher income or spend less money and so on and so forth. And when you lay eyes on it, you already hide away the purchases and the gaping hole in the couple's financial life only intensifies, leading to a further deterioration of their financial situation. If at least a portion of what I have stated in this context makes any sense to you, there is a potential that your marriage may be at risk and in need of attention or evaluation. Please pay attention to this, okay? Because on the other hand, I am fully aware that there are always the individuals who deny, right? Who are the individuals who deny the impact of personalities and money? There are individuals who state that they would never allow money to affect their marriage and relationships, denying any influence it might have. Yet what you may not know is that numerous of these problems are actually unconscious in nature. Your life is imbalanced without you even realizing it. I am aware that this is a common occurrence. And you see all those consequences that we have seen so far are nothing but the failure to comply with other biblical principles as well. The Bible does not encourage me to be emotionally unbalanced. On the contrary, the word states that self-control is a fruit of the spirit. So if you don't have the patience to listen to a class today, you should examine the fruits of the spirit that are present in the Bible. Moreover, I am pleased to share that Yolanda, who is both my student and mentee, has also overcome her depression just like my other mentee Yolanda did. Yeah, after you started getting your finances under control. And the Bible doesn't encourage me to destroy relationships. 
On the contrary, it encourages us to love one another. And even more importantly, it does not encourage us to love the Bible. It doesn't encourage us to destroy families. On the contrary, he argues that family is the foundation and that what God has joined together, let no man or money separate it. Therefore, here is a crucial warning. Commence following the principles outlined in the Bible regarding finance in order to apply the subsequent phrase, which holds immense significance and should not be overlooked. What God has joined together, let money not separate them. Yes or yes? Yes, are you guys in agreement? That is truly awesome. It is really great that you agree with me today. And the word of God says that obeying is better than making sacrifices. Yes, do you understand? Obedience is better than sacrifice. I repeat because it's very important. And in fact, there is no way to comply without knowing without knowledge. However, it is not sufficient to have knowledge. You must know how to act. And that is what I am already starting to demonstrate to you in the second stage that will commence this upcoming Thursday. Yes, there you will have access to support material and a closed Facebook community as well. However, please keep in mind that in order to receive the links for the classes in the second stage, you must be a member of the WhatsApp group, all right? So join the WhatsApp group for the Biblical Finance Intensive. But if you're not yet in one of the groups, check out the link in the description of this video, where you'll find the link to join a WhatsApp group for the intensive, all right? So that you can also receive your participation certificate for free, right? And now, coming up next, I'm going to answer some questions that I always get in finance cases for couples. There are individuals who inquire of me like this. The first question, Doc, my spouse doesn't talk about money with me. I know this is really bad, but when it comes to marriage, I'm not sure what I should do. And I'll tell you, not everyone likes to talk about money with their partner. Yeah, yeah, it is normal. They only begin speaking when things start to become problematic. However, that is a significant mistake, yes. As I previously stated, financial problems are one of the primary reasons for couples ending their relationship. Research says that financial problems cause more separations than infidelity. Can you believe it? Yes or yes? Yeah, yeah. And the fact that you conceal your finances from your partner creates something known as something that is very problematic here, which is referred to as financial infidelity. Do you understand? Yes, yes, this occurs. However, there is a technique to prepare and avoid encountering it. And we are going to see that here and here because here we are going by what the Bible says. Look, all of this is based on biblical grounds. Look at your Bible now. See what it tells us in Ephesians 5.31. It goes like this. That's why a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and they will become one flesh. Look, as Christians and believing in the Bible, when we enter into the sacred union of marriage, we are joined together as one flesh, one person, without exception or condition. So, Imagine this. Now, two people. Yes, you've got to have patience in our class. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Yes, so we are getting to the end, but let us have some patience here. Two individuals in vision with diverse habits, cultures, and ways. Are they experiencing enjoyment in the class? Is it yes or yes? And behold, it is indeed yes. Thus, the two individuals take leave of their respective parents in order to join together as a unified entity. And this, this, yes, this will unquestionably change our individual behavior. So comprehending this biblical principle in our finances can also avert numerous problems for your family. There are individuals who find it impossible to alter their financial situation because their partner is not dedicated to it. I am aware that this can occur, right? I always emphasize this, which is very important, particularly in this context. The wise woman constructs the home and the foolish one demolishes it. And today, I would like for you to embody the role of the wise woman. Who among all of you here desires to be the wise woman? Write it to me in the chat. Yo, 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 I'm the wise woman. I am the wise woman. And if your spouse doesn't worry about finances or struggles to comprehend that they require assistance, what are you going to do? You initiate setting the example. 
The example is of paramount importance and serves as a vital guide. You commence displaying that you prioritize exercising good administration, which is stewardship, and it pertains to the proficient management of family finances. And that's what Lucimara did. Lucimara convinced her husband, Victor, that she needed help. See her testimony and see how a wise woman will act. Take a look at Victor's testimony now, the husband of Lucimara, to improve your financial life. My name is Victor. Hi. You probably don't know me, right? Because I don't really participate much in the rich Christian group. Because actually the one who is registered there who appears is my wife, Lucimara. But in fact, I am the very person who is actually taking the course. So you may see how exceedingly difficult it was for me to come to terms with the unsettling fact that I desperately needed help. I really desired to, I deeply knew, but I simply wouldn't accept it. So this acceptance process turned out to be quite hard. But by the grace of God, my wife, with all her gentleness, managed to convince me that it would be good for us. We encountered a bit of difficulty in getting around to undertaking this course and thank God we managed to complete it. It was really good because we found ourselves in a complex situation, but not just complex because of the debts, but also engulfed in despair because we didn't know what to do, where to turn, and we thought it was a situation that had no way back, no solution. But thank God we've managed, we are making some significant progress, even though I am not very active in offering feedback within the group, but I am diligently participating and completing the activities. I'm diligently performing all the necessary activities. I'm actively applying the methods as required. And so God is at work. And uh, it was really very good and very important for us. So uh, I just wanted to say thanks, even apologize, because I am walking and going to work. I'm heading to the site now where I work. I'm an entrepreneur. I have a small business in the service sector, providing services. I'm on my way there now. Really, I want to express my deep gratitude to all of you involved in the Rich Christian Project. Yes, I sincerely recommend it. I own a company in the construction sector. I provide services in plastering, electrical work, steel frame. So we are here in Minas Gerais in the city of Vinopolis in Belo Horizonte. And it's been six months since I did a I returned to my partnership with my brother-in-law, who is also a professional in the field. He arrived significantly earlier than what was expected. For the commencement of the course, so consequently, I invited him back in order to efficiently deal with the increased workload. And so I started The Wealthy Christian, and the interesting thing is that I have managed to implement a lot. I have shown to my brother-in-law the methods, the peculiar ways of investing, because it was something that I didn't want, was resistant to, because I thought business was just about winning, 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 in the sense that it's just about making money and not investing, not having working capital. Thus today, one of the strategies we're applying is to retract this working capital. It's actually to invest in infrastructure items I had never attempted before. I couldn't have this planning, so the Rich Christian program is helping me a lot, a lot in this regard. From the company to manage not only my personal accounts, but also the company's accounts, and one directly impacts the other. Men tend to be more practical, yes. They believe it's primarily about making more money and spending less, and that's it and they consider everything else to be nonsense and irrelevant. And precisely because of that, some people find it hard to admit that they need help with their finances. If you're a man, I always like to remind you that the man is the head of the family unit. And as such, you can and should set an example. Yes, indeed, and pay close attention now, please. It is of utmost importance. If you are of the opinion that there is no hope with your partner, that he will never admit that you need to make changes with regards to finances, the most valuable piece of advice I can offer you is to not give up under any circumstances. No, if you have already started, do not stop until you have your finances completely under control. Do your part. It is of no consequence today whether you have commenced with your husband or wife at this particular moment in time or not.
If you possess one, the answer is no. The crucial thing is that God is elevating you to rectify the financial situation of the couple. God always elevates one of the two individuals to address the financial situation. Certainly at times, both in combination, which is the best. However, if not both, at least one of them would be preferable. If you have started, do not stop doing it. Get in touch with me in the chat at this moment. I started, I won't stop anymore. Yeah, and that's it. This is a really important thing for your financial life. You have to initiate and refrain from halting any further. Engage in a dialogue with yourself. I initiated. I will not halt any longer. Carry out your part and enable God to carry out his. Put this in your sentence. I've seen several cases of couples or family members who were able to change their financial life because only one of the couple or family took charge and made the decision to change. And of course, yes, it was sufficient for you to possess the knowledge of how to comprehend and implement these principles in your life as a couple. There exists the wisdom. Yeah. Do you desire to possess wisdom within your family? Yes or yes. Is that what you seek? Do you think it is possible? So get in touch with me in the chat, I believe. Yeah. Now have a look at this concise story. If it were you, yes, with your partner or whoever you reside with on a boat out at sea, correct? I wonder how you would handle the challenges of living in such a unique and isolated environment like that. Envision this scenario. By a stroke of luck, this individual faints right before your eyes. In such a situation, would you be willing to let the ship sink merely because they have lost consciousness? Or would you let out a piercing scream in a desperate attempt to save yourself and your partner? What? What actions are you going to undertake in this situation? That's it. In your finances, this is something that occurs at some point. Sometimes that's what occurs in a couple's finances. One of the two individuals appears to be unconscious. Is that correct or not? Do you comprehend? Is that a yes? But God usually wakes someone up to try to save the ship. Remember it. Keep it in your mind in your life today. And why am I mentioning it to you today in our class, you might be wondering. How to keep finances from destroying your family. I always hear people say that the couple's economy is sunk because of the other person. But change starts with you, never with the other person. Yes or yes, it's important for you today. And if you let the ship sink, is it also your fault? I have like to talk to you about this as your mentor today. You are the one who is responsible. That is why as well. Discussing money is not about asking the other person, where did you spend it? Why did you spend this? No, this is not it. Having a conversation about money is not the same as arguing after you've already spent it. Similar to operating a vehicle, it is not about gazing into the rearview mirror. It is not. Does any individual drive while looking backwards? No. I no longer do it. I do not do it. No, no, no. I apologize. Why? Am I always forward looking when driving? Is it about talking before spending? What are your dreams? Is it meeting up to define what they want together? What are you guys going to do moving forward? And how do you plan on using your money? What are your dreams? And this can be done at any time. What are they going to be about the financial problems? What is the game plan going to be? I have frequent discussions with my mentees regarding strategies for relationships, getting out of debt, making money stretch, and initiating investments. It doesn't have to be just at the beginning of the relationship, no. They've been together for a while and things just don't seem to be falling into place. It is time to sit down and have a conversation and make a plan, always showing respect, of course, for the individuality of everyone. This is extremely important. But knowing that they will have to find a way together, the first thing the couple must jointly define is, what do we want to do with our money? An example for you, working towards goals, let's invest, let's travel, let's buy our own house or pay rent and live wherever we want, a car, retirement, home renovation, furniture. What do you desire? What do you desire both? Affirmative? You must be cognizant of this. List this and put it in order of priority. It's time to dream together and start putting our dreams into writing. And it's those dreams that when they become goals, 
in a number with a deadline will define how you're going to use your money, the money of both of you. They will define together everything they are going to use, your money on a daily basis, what is a priority, and establish the spending goal. When a spending target is stopped, goals are also established. I talk a lot about goals, about what your dream is in your individual case. I talk a lot about this with my mentees from the full program, I Control My Finances. If you're going to talk about whether it makes sense to give up something or not, won't there be sacrifices in finances too? Why are they going to choose? They will be together making decisions as a couple. Make the financial picture of the couple even. Look, in the second stage of this intensive, I'll talk about this in the workshop of the Christian week of I control my finances in practice. Yeah, don't miss out. And if they are well aligned in relation to the couple's financial landscape, if they are successfully managing to control their spending goals, investments, and individual cases, I'll also tell you something important here. Our class today is incredible, isn't it? Are you enjoying it? Yeah? Yeah? Look, I'll tell you something very important right now as well. Whether you have a joint bank account or not, it will not make much of a difference. It is just a minor detail. Yes, having a joint account is more practical, yes, but having an individual account maintains that sense of individuality. So it's a decision for the couple and it's no big deal, okay? We are not going to fight over a detail. One more thing. How can we handle the individual expenses of each person? It's another question that many couples ask me. There are women who complain that their husband spends too much on the car, for example, or on sports. There's a husband who complains that his wife spends too much money at the hair salon and this causes a fight. And here comes a question that cannot be left unanswered when it comes to the finances of the family. Is that not right? What to do with each person's individual expenses? It's an important point, yeah, for the couple to maintain their individuality. Here's the thing, look, when creating the financial picture of the couple, you have to define the expenses. I'm going to talk about the financial picture at the Christian week I control my finances, right? Define the expenses, define the investment goals, set aside an amount for each person to use, without having to answer to the other. Is it possible and is this even important for romance? Can you all do this? Is it a possibility? Have you ever thought about having to define together at the beginning of the month the surprise gift they want to give each other, for example? Is it possible? So therefore, one of the items in the couple's financial picture has to be each person's individual expense, which can be whatever they want. And if one of you earns more than the other, and the couple decides to have their own separate accounts, how do you go about it? I like the idea of adding up what each person earns and from there defining the economic outlook of the couple. For example, if one person earns $5,000 and the other $2,000, they both earn $7,000. And from there, everything is defined, you know? Look, if you do a proportional division based on what each person earns, whoever earns more pays more, mathematically it makes sense, but it creates a kind of weird atmosphere in the couple. There should be a conversation, particularly if after a period of time, the situation flips and this can occur. You have to keep this in mind. So what I see that makes more sense are equal divisions. But it is also possible to consider proportional division, yes, for each one. And this, let's proceed ahead, yes. We are getting close to the end of our class. And now I want to share some final tips with you. Who is ready to hear them? Yeah, yeah, inform me, write it in the chat, I desire it. Where are the highly committed ones? Really, do you want to? Yeah, we had lots of content in our class today. Yes, yes. Look, here's a crucial tip. It's a possibility to define the controller of the couple's finances, right? And everything has to be controlled together. I believe it is beneficial to have a designated driver. It is not about having power, but about having the skill. Kindly pay attention. Do you understand the disparity between authority and ability? Is that clear to you? Take a look. Which of the two has a higher capacity, maybe in terms of technical expertise, maybe in terms of talent, to control finances? 
and everything is good. Everything will be discussed and defined together. But it is important that one of the two be the mediator. In every couple, there's always someone who is a little better at this, and it is no big deal. Yeah, yeah, it is something of great importance. If not, find someone who is a little more interested in learning or someone who has a greater level of enthusiasm to motivate others. I think it's good to take advantage of everyone's unique talents, you know. And one more thing, another piece of advice from me as your mentor today, and make decisions together, okay? But the most important thing is that we always define together the way to solve a disagreement or a problem. This is what God desires for your life. If you have faith in the Bible, this will work for you, especially since in finance, every problem has a solution. We simply have to locate it. And without a doubt, two heads undoubtedly think better than just a single head. Therefore, it is crucial that you do not hide anything from each other. Transparency and openness are key to a healthy relationship. And that is financial infidelity. Always keep in mind that your love is more significant and valuable than any financial success, you know? And one more thing here, there is no such thing as my money and your money. It is our money belonging to both of us. Today, the situation is like this, but in the future, it may change. Only God knows what tomorrow will bring. Remember that God has made you one flesh. Pay attention to this. Knowing the financial personality of your komoche, of your partner, is also important. In my theory, I provide instruction, I elaborate on each of the financial personalities of couples, and it is a highly important approach to resolve, have successfully resolved the financial problems of the couple. There are four types, saver, spender, spiritual, or denier. And I teach this in depth to my mentees. I would need a lot more classes here to talk about this, and I can say that we all have more than one personality and uncover the truth about what it is, resolves a serious issue. Yes, what is it exactly? Fixes serious issues in the relationship. Yeah, it's important to figure out what your financial personality is. Yeah, it truly assists in resolving, yeah, significant problems in the relationship, you know? Speaker, spender, spiritual or denier, you know? If you're interested in defining where your money is going, based on the Bible and having your finances under control, making extra money, starting investing to fulfill God's dreams in your life, you need to follow the intensive classes of the second stage of that intensive, which is the Christian week, I control my finances, who's in? The web, jot it down. Remember that it's 100% online, 100% online, only for registered participants. If you're already in one of the intensives WhatsApp groups, then there's no need to worry. You're already subscribed there. Proceed and subscribe at no cost using the link below this video. If you're on YouTube watching this video, don't waste your time. And subscribe and activate the notifications on the little bell. Give it a like too and share this video now. Now, the phrase for today's class is what God has joined together, let not money separate it. I repeat the class phrase, the phrase, the class phrase, sorry, what God has joined together, let no money separate it. Before I reveal the keyword, I want you to know that we have an incredible class tomorrow night, which is indeed taking place tomorrow afternoon. How to have more time in class 13 to make more money and keep finances under control. Do you encounter issues with managing time? The class we've had today is already one of the most important ones in my perspective. So tomorrow we're going to have a very special class last night. And of course, signing up for the second stage of our intensive is very important too. What will you do now? First, join the WhatsApp group for the intensive if you're not already in it. Hey, come back tomorrow to check out lesson 13 a special class on how to have more time to make more money and keep your finances in check. Three, and in case you haven't seen it yet, make sure to watch the documentary, don't miss out on it. The keyword for your complimentary participation certificate is union. Team, please enter it in the chat now, keyword union, make sure to write it down, all right? Team, please release the attendance list now in the chat if possible, okay? Meanwhile, I will go ahead and release a very special video just for you. So may God bless you and see you soon. Goodbye.
Uh, do not forget tomorrow night, there will be a very special class with lots of biblical financial principles for you. Goodbye and take care. Because after the rich Christian, I start to see life in a different way. My financial problems were fading away. A mortgage on my house, which I would take another eight years to pay off. I tell you that today I own a paid off house. There are several other debts that were troubling me and having the ability to do something that had not occurred in years in my life. Having extra money, having extra money of mine, my money never used to be extra. So managing to have some extra to invest as advised by the rich Christian in the portfolio we are following, following the completion of the course, I successfully managed to have some money left over from my salary, which was an achievement I hadn't been able to accomplish for a number of years. I managed to pay off the debts, a debt of 23,958, if I'm not mistaken at the time. In a span of 60 days, I managed to completely pay off this debt. This to me was an invaluable accomplishment that I can't put a price on. In addition to that debt, later on, I also paid off another debt. So for me, this was crucial. So at this point in time, now that I have a certain amount of money left over from my salary, I started making an investment as well. I began investing some money and I did not have a car. I used to walk. I have a car now. It is not a fancy one, but I have a car in my garage now. This, in my opinion, is absolutely priceless. Wow, what an overwhelming feeling. I am filled with immense happiness and gratitude. I state that the wealthy Christian was positioned in my existence at a critical juncture. It was of utmost importance. So the rich Christian was truly remarkable. It compelled me to completely empty myself and wholeheartedly believe that those incredible people were there to provide unwavering support, invaluable mentorship, and invaluable guidance on how to truly eliminate debts, achieve a well-balanced financial life, make wise investments, generate additional income, unearth hidden talents, and gain clarity on my desired path in life. I've already organized myself. I no longer have to borrow from loan sharks. I no longer have the private shops and businesses I had before because it was getting difficult. Everything is under control. My financial life is completely under control. I don't have that worry. One of the things I constantly had was power cuts. I couldn't handle it. Today I don't have. Sometimes I see a cutting car passing by and I breathe like this. Then I don't have. I'm calm. Everything is up to date. The year 2020 was the first year that ended that I ended with 1,500 reis. I can say, thanks to the rich Christian, I'm at peace. I can have a much calmer financial life. Financially, I'm not a slave to finances. The debts already existed, car financing, still paying for it. So there were quite a few things there, open debts, paying for land in installments, right? So that bar where we stayed, wow, and now what are we going to do, right? And that's when I started studying. I started the course slowly and began to see the transformations, many transformations. Reduction in bills, surprisingly, I learned to do extra activities that we didn't even pay attention to before because we were in our comfort zone. So I acquired new skills and knowledge. I established an online store through the course where they educate us on the importance of continuous self-improvement, undergoing a shift in mindset, thoughts and attitudes, and constantly striving to better ourselves. And that helped a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So with each step I took within the course, I saw the changes. And in the end, it was success, total success, both material and spiritual. It was wonderful. I had some loans which were insured. And there we learned how to reduce these loans, how to pay, how to pay off these loans. And we kept practicing this exercising control. For us, it wasn't enough to do things halfway. It only served us to do it right, to do it completely. Today, I am able to sleep in peace. The complete transformation in our lives has been absolutely incredible and utterly profound. I initiated the story by discussing the debts I had. And presently, we are actively engaged in the process of making investments. My dear friend and partner in this venture, we are investors. At this moment, we were able to contribute and provide assistance to individuals in need, which is also a very impressive principle that makes a difference in people's lives. Today, I feel at peace. Today, I sleep peacefully. We still face our life's challenges. It doesn't stop. But today, I can plan, organize myself to achieve, reaching new things every day.